Uh, trying to get everything situated. Okay. Alrighty. Well, before I get into the intro, I want to quickly thank Buddha in Glasses. I believe that's I O R Buddha who made his debut uh, yesterday in the A G R L Touring Car Race. But anyway, hey, what's up, everyone? Ryan Arnold, aka Demon Master, Demon Master Reviews, and welcome to the debut uh, episode of the Damage Podcast, where I talk about everything from gaming, racing, online racing, and all that stuff, uh, music, the channel itself, and everything else in between. As I see, we have one follower or one view, one viewer. <laughs> viewer um but yes i've got a lot to talk about here here i want to kind of start i wanted to start off with the racing stuff but i want to save that for the last let's talk about maybe say music wise and the channel itself as i am now writing down another thing thing on my uh notes to talk about Notes to talk about, we'll save the racing for that later, but let's talk about, obviously, the channel, it's obviously, um, I did kind of delay my Countless Skies retrospective, perspective, so I'm going to be starting that hopefully, uh, really soon here, really soon here, um, Obviously, that has been a project. Obviously, the notes, all the notes for Countless Skies have been taken. I got holding the papers as I'm, well, I wish I could show on a camera, but I don't have a camera, a webcam or anything like that right now. But I got the notes right here. Um, We'll be recording maybe shortly after this, but um, I don't know yet, but hopefully soon but I do have other uh retrospectives that I am that are going to be coming up after countless skies skies uh obviously slipknot is going to ha- be happening here was good is going to be happening that's the September 1 October for me will be at Paris it's yet another will of tape records countless skies is a will of tape records band and then I'm finally going to come into November with one I had decided, you know what, I will do one for November. It'll be a shorter band. That band is Corellia. I only did one album and an EP, so I figured, you know, why not do them? Do them. But that's pretty much about it. It. Oh, and all these you can find on our Utreon channel, which I will leave a link in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, I will leave a link in the description for our Utreon channel. 
So, yeah, you can go and watch that. But, um, I was originally also going to maybe do a little mini album review on here, uh, for the new, uh, for the debut album from, uh, the Halo Effect called Days of Lost, which is a band, super group featuring all former members of In Flames. Ames, they were all in, in Flames at one point. Point, but I'm saving that for probably the next episode, so. But yeah, that's pretty much... In terms of the channel, in terms of the channel or all the upcoming retrospectives. Um, now I am switching into the music side still, but it's a little bit different. As I might have mentioned, I am in several, well, I all the back, I was in several bands. Well, I am now starting to get uh, with all my, my solo band, which, I, which is now called The Gems of Reality, and I have been... Obviously, I have nothing much to say. I'm trying to work on the lyrics and stuff and trying to find... Trying to find people for it. To see if, you know, get some interest and stuff like that. Uh, I'll basically talk what Gems of Reality is. It's my solo... Kind of solo concept project slash band. Trying to get some people uh, for it. But, um... Yeah, but yeah, that's trying to get maybe find the basses, the gu lead guitars, because I do rhythm and I do also harsh vocals. Try to find maybe a vocal or maybe have guest vocals. I obviously have guest guitar solos, guitarists, guest guitarists, guest bassists, maybe even guest drummers sometimes. But obviously have a bassist, a drummer, and a lead guitarist that are all. It's the standard for me and stuff like that, at the very least, with me being the main rhythm guitar guy, a main bassist, a main drummer, and a main lead guitar player. I have artwork that I could maybe show at some point. But obviously, I might do it when I get a web, you know, get a webcam and all that stuff, and all that stuff for that. But um. Obviously, that's I wanted to briefly touch base on that. So yeah, that's pretty much I believe off of that's pretty much everything. So let's get into the racing stuff, pretty much, and I will get we we'll get into some other some gaming stuff. So let's let's start with the week. The week started with what I essentially like to call the the Larry B show. That's where Tuesday was Larry, Larry B the G entered into the DMSRA uh, street stock race. Into the street stock race, and he can pretty much pretty much flat out dominated. Dominated that race and route to the victory. His first race of the in that series, his debut race, and he wins. No shocker. And then obviously Thursday he also competed in the Torah Formula Mazda race, uh, which had a lot of other notables and a little bit more of a competition. Uh, I believe Apex Blade was in the was in the race, and Larry B won the feature, which meant. He continued it on the weekday. He is the pretty much I could say the week, the weekday warrior, <laughs> warrior, and he completely just flat out dominate. He didn't completely flat out dominate. There was a lot of other people who were leading, leading in the race. Um, Blade was battling, was battling Larry for the lead at some points. At some points, I believe, him, there were others who were. Uh, Gapplebees was, you know, up there at the front, and then he fell back later on, and it was completely shocking. Shocking, to say the least. But, uh, it was the Larry B, the G show, all the way through. Uh, Blake got second in both the, the sprint and the feature race in the Tour of Formula Mazda race, but Larry continued his domination after the momentum he had, um, at... Uh, Lime Rock. That was the race at the the street stock race for DMSRA was at Lime Rock, and pretty much yeah, and pretty much that's what happened. Pretty much 
Um, as I am pretty much getting, obviously with that, um, let's get into a different, different car. Now we'll get into the, the FTC car. I was racing in there. I believe Diablo won the race, which wasn't a complete, which wasn't a complete shocker to say the least. Um, I finished 15th once again. Again, there were a lot of some disconnects, but I was fairly sure I was going to make it all the way uh, through that. That was on Saturday. It was the first Saturday race. Uh, not much to say. Wasn't that much interesting battles. Corey was battling. Corey CC97 was battling for the lead, but in the end, it was Diablo. Diablo was too much. Was too much for record to try and you know handle so that race just in and of itself was you know kind of an uneventful race but race for me i it was kind of interesting in the back i was battling you know trying to stay not stay last and stuff i didn't finish last out of everybody that was active so i finished 15th which was a pretty good finish and i matched my finish from last week pretty much then we get to the next race after that, which would be the OEC race, the Online Endurance Championship race at Laguna Seca. It was originally going to be Le Mans, but that got changed. Changed, and the bullet points I have for this are... Brett ends up leaving early or got DC'd or something. He was one of only probably a handful of people who got... I believe he was one of only two people who got the, you know, the DC in the race... And from then on, it became literally a show. Well, obviously, Phoenix dominated in the LMDH class, so it was not a shocker. So it's not a shocker. Not a shocker that he won. That he won. Uh, but the more interesting one was the battle for the GT League between Scored Buffalo, Girthy Steve, and Seagull. As soon as Brett left... Gerthy then took control of second and was surprisingly keeping up and catching Scored. Score, which may, which Scored was probably I wouldn't know what was going on with Scored, but he was wait what? It was the old it was the older Chevy, but Gerthy Steve was keeping up with Scored Buffalo in those early runs, and Siegel was trying to also close in and stuff like that. Uh, it ended up being scored. He got a little bit of a scare because he did lose the lead because he made a little bit of a mistake that allowed Gerthy to take the lead and also score to get, uh, not score, Seagull to get second. Seagull was also in the hunt to try and catch up to score, but it was a little bit too late. Late scored ends up getting the victory in this, in the GT class. Which also, like I said, it also had, I believe, deflated. We was in the race. Obviously, I said Brett, RZM, Brett was in the race. Patches. Dogs. Hold on, everyone. I'll be right back.
Alrighty, I am back. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. We were just doing OEC. Yes. So, yeah, that was basically the, uh, the sum of it for the OEC was basically, basically the GT cars. Those three GT cars of Seagull, Score Buffalo, and Gertie Steve. Steve, you know, we're all pretty much keeping it a very interesting battle. But then we also, he kind of does get a little bit better here. A bit better here. We now move on to the, well, yeah, the last race that was yesterday. The AGRL Touring Car Race at Bernie's Alps, in which it was essentially Odd versus the Apex guys. That being Blade and Rocky. And it was interesting to say the least. Uh, all of them were keeping up. Blade was trying to... In both of them. But Odd comes out on top. And is the first... Yes, he is the first in the AGRL T Touring Car Series. To sweep the Sprint and Feature Race. He won last week. He does it again, but in such dominant fashion. Although there were some scares here there from Blade and Rocky. Rocky, not so much Icon Gaming and IOR Buddha, who I will say thank y'all for the follow. But it was mainly the main competition for... Uh, was basically the Apex guys, and they made it... An interesting thing. The other thing I wanted to mention is in the feature. Obviously, Odd started in last, and he got up to first near the off of lap one. Then we had different, some different leaders, some on different strategies and stuff like that, and stuff like that. That, but the most interesting thing was Rocky and Blade saw what Odd was doing, but it didn't really pan out they went to the back for some odd reason just to try and make it interesting but it wasn't but it uh wasn't enough and essentially yeah odd came out with the victory in both the sprint and feature being the first to do so but i doubt he'll be the last if this series continues. He is... Essentially, he has emerged as pretty much the championship favorite in this race. In this series. And I wouldn't be surprised if he wins it. Wins the championship at this point. But I want to also get into... Something else when, the, when it comes to the in the in the racing stuff is I want to start my own, and this gets to obviously this car right here, and then we'll get to that this car right here. Uh, I'm starting my own kind of a league or association called the Damaging Racing Championship Association, and I have essentially come up with. Three series, an open wheel, an open wheel series, a NASCAR series, and an endurance series. And I will start, obviously I want to start off with the open wheel one that I am, that I thought of. And I thought, well, why not try this? And this is going to be a multi-class open wheel series. Meaning different, I uh, stick into the modern cars, which would be the modern F1, which is the Red R F17, at least in the game. This one's going to be happening sooner, probably the NASCAR one too. So now get to that one. Um, but I do have the uh, the cars here. Yes, pretty much the Red R F17 is the F1 car. All the Indy cars, even the 2017 versions, are available. The Formula Mazda and the Formula Ford, and I will have. Specific tunings for that. Uh, the other series I am going to do, and hopefully might be starting alongside the open wheel one, is... And I have this idea from seeing that the MSRA guys have the 60s and 70s. Blah, blah, blah. Why not go a little bit further? Why not the 40s and 50s? And the cars that I chose 
Fordist is the 1940 Ford Coupe, the 1949 Mercury Coupe, and the 1955 Chevy Sedan. Dan, and still trying to work out the races for all of them. Some might be sharing day, sharing track. Well, not so much. Not so much in certain tracks, you know. The 40s and 50s cars are going to probably be, obviously, the Oval, so that being at the Indy. Daytona, Homestead, even the road course versions I will have on the schedule for the next car. So the, all the road course versions, the, the 24 hours, the, the 24 hour track for Daytona, uh, yes, the GP track for Indy, and then probably the road circuit, probably the alt version where you have it, turns three and four are intact. That might be the one, so that's six. I am trying to probably include Glenn and Sonoma, so that's already eight. That's already a. I'm trying to think of. There won't be any playoffs. I will still try to think of the point system. But the other one that I have wanted to, that I wanted to mention here, is the endurance one. And I want to work closely with Tora on this one. Speak to those the guys in the Tora thing. Um. Which is basically, it's called the Ultimate Endurance Series. And it comes down to this card that you're seeing right here. The Porsche RS Spider Evo, the 2008 one. one. This is essentially kind of a team-based uh, endurance version of IROC. Where you have one universal spec car, you know, being in, you know, normal homologation tuning which you can see it is currently at 949 which is right in the middle of trying to find a car that's you know roughly in the, the between 901 and 998 but not going 999 so I thought okay this one makes complete sense you know 949 pretty much uh, makes sense essentially it kind of makes sense because it is right in the middle of both 901 and 998. Oh, wait, so this will essentially be the card. All the things you're seeing are what it is. Um, essentially, this will be probably an invite only. Invite only, at least in the first, at least the first season. I'm trying to get some teams together. I have a few. I have a list of those. If I can find the list. Ah, here it is. What I got here so far is basically the stints are going to be, depending on it, I don't know when, if Tor is going to continue the endurance thing, but if it does not, this idea will be scrapped. But what I have here is, I got a few notes. One hour stints, um, and you go all the way, basically. Um, and basically where you are is... And the, basically, you go all the way until the timer hits zero, basically. All zeros. All zeros. The one thing that I have is wherever you finish in the stint, it carries over to the next stint. It carries over to the next stint. And there will be all full-fledged ones, basically. Let's say if it's Daytona, usually it's a 24-hour race. It'll be 12 instead. It'll be 12 instead, and we'll have 12 stints, all one hour. Hour, essentially, at basically, let's say, I got a few, let's go with my team. My team wins stint one, we're going to start first in the road. Not that it's possible, though, just going with my team. My team is in there, so I wanted to stay safe. So some of the teams, and if any of y'all, any of the teams that are, that are listening or watching this, and that are interested in one to participate. I got some of the names. If your name, if your team's name has been mentioned, if y'all are interested, let me know. I have so far, uh, excluding my team, Apex, McLeod Racing Team, Shockwave Racing. I never know what the initial what it, these stand for, but SDVT from OEC, IFEA. Uh, FTC, AX4X, NWR, uh, DMS, uh, Tempest Motorsports, and Raven Racing. Yes, my former team. I would definitely 
at some point I would definitely invite them. But those are all the teams I have so far on the list. List. Um, well, obviously, I want to have 20, but then obviously the next season, if it even continues, it'll probably be on FM8. Only the top 10 would be guaranteed. Top 10 in points, and yes, there are points for this. So I will rattle off the points here. Uh, obviously, I made this in a way of... First, what I did was I structured it in a way of doing this. So the bottom four are separated by one point. So that's 17 to 20. 13 to 16 is separated by two points. 9 to 12 is separated by three points. 5 to 8 is separated by four points. And 1 to 4 are separated by five points. And then I took those and multiplied them by 12. 12. And then I divided them by two. So the point system is as follows. First, 360 points. Second, 330 points. Third, 300 points. Fourth, 270 points. Fifth, 240 points. Sixth, 216 points. Seventh, 192 points. Eighth, 168 points. Ninth, 144 points. Tenth, 126 points. Eleventh, 108 points. Twelfth, 90 points. Thirteenth, 72 points. Fourteenth, 60 points. Fifteenth, 48 points. 16th, 36 points. Uh, 17th, 24 points. 18th, 18 points. Uh, 19th, 12 points. And 20th, 6 points. That is the official, at least the official point system in, term, in place for this. So that is pretty much... All I want to talk about, it's been over, now over 30 minutes or so, or so, but I guess I will talk about my, the racing schedule for my schedule for my upcoming schedule for racing and what I will be, what will happen. So I have, in terms of those that I'm going to be racing with, and these are going to be it for me in some of these leagues. Uh, the ones I'm racing in so far, we got, um, I got at least five leagues in here, so. Wednesdays, uh, the DMSRA late models, they're qualifying in duels. Duels, the duels will be 25 laps each. It'll be two, two duels. The race is Saturday. And then we have the, uh, 60s and 70s for DMSRA. I'll be racing in that for Friday, qualify, buying into racing. OEC, my last race in that, Le Mans, uh, it'll be a 90-minute race at 4 p.m. p.m., and it'll be in this car, just in a more, a higher up one. Uh, Formula Mans, I will be racing, that is the last one for me when it comes down to that, I do love that. And then, finally, the last one in the week, for racing at least, AGRL IndyCar at Indy. I uh, hope it uh, should be soon. Um, they're about to do their carb day thing, and I might be, might stream it, but I don't know. We, will, I will see. Let's see, but if I'm by the time this is up on YouTube, I might be racing it. Yeah. But as far as those in terms of the 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 casting ones. Uh, the street stock race, I don't know where they're going to be at, but, um, that will be on Tuesday. That'll be on Tuesday. Uh, Task Car at Watkins Glen, 52 laps. I might stream that, commentate that, cast that, whatever. There. If not, oh well. It is what it is. Uh, FES on Friday, and then their season finale at the, their, their Rover Rumble at this time at the Indy GP. And then, obviously, Saturday also, AGRL Touring Car at Prague. I will be commentating that, but I will have 15 laps, a 15-lap sprint, and a 30-lap feature there. Uh, I have won there in the past. I might actually race it. Oh, no. Maybe. But who knows? I don't. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. But that will. those are the races I will have that I have 
that I'll be some of the races that I will be racing in, and then the races that I will be streaming slash commentating in. All of them will be streamed. It's just that some I will be racing in, some I will be commentating in. So that is what this week looks like. Look like looks like. So yeah, I think that's. I guess there are some other things I could talk about, just some makeshift things. Um, I guess the gaming thing, I do want to leave out one of the days, uh, that isn't being raced on, whether that be either Monday, Mondays are usually the days off or something like that, but sometimes I might stream on that, sometimes I won't, uh, I do want to do other games, you know, maybe do some, maybe do some retro ones, like I got Gears of War, War on here, and I see what's going on, no. You know, or Red Dead Redemption 1 or something. Look at some games that I got and maybe do a classic game, classic uh, live stream. Or maybe I can redo the Halo 2 Let's Play. I might actually redo that. Hopefully soon. I don't know when, but hopefully soon. But, um, I believe that should be about it that I wanted to talk about in this debut uh, episode, um, yeah, I will, I guess that's it, it, if y'all like this, uh, debut episode of the Damage Podcast, watch this on YouTube, click the like button or the dislike button, uh, on YouTube, comment below what you're Thoughts are on these. If you're obviously new to the channel, obviously make sure to follow us on Utreon and subscribe to our YouTube channel where all of my VODs will be and so on and so forth. So yeah, thank y'all for watching. This has been the debut episode of the Damaged Podcast. I will see y'all later and as always, keep things metal.